Good morning. It's great for you to have, yes, good morning, good morning, that's great. It's great to have you uh, tuned in with us uh, this morning. Uh, it's good to be back with you after taking a, a week off from the streaming service. We still had our in-person uh, worship service last week and we had it again this morning. It's great to, to have you. Uh, I want to welcome you, whether you're returning back to being tuned in or or this is your first time finding us and, and being a part of the church family. We are glad that you are with us. I want to thank Corey for that wonderful prelude that uh, is a powerful song, Easter song, resurrection song, and so it's great uh, to hear that uh, this morning. As we gather together, and I say good morning to our tech folks in the back as well, I've already said good morning to our music folks, uh, I want us to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship uh, as we stand, but before we do, as you stand in your homes, uh, to remind you to start sending your prayers up, that whatever prayers we're able to get before our prayer time, we will share those as we light our candles. Let us sing together, uh, Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, the words are on your screen. Let us join together the call to worship. The words are on your screen. How joyful it is to celebrate the good news of God's love. We are, we are called, called to be Easter, Easter people. people. Darkness cannot claim us. Fear, Fear cannot, cannot bind us. us. Christ is risen. I want to invite the children to kind of gather around their, their screens, their iPads, their their notebooks, whatever it is that you have. And, and I want to ask you a question, because you know I'm good to ask questions, is have you seen something that you just couldn't believe you were seeing? Have you seen a, a, a bird's eggs hatch and, and you just can't believe you, you've seen it? I want to tell you, just outside the door of our worship center, up above, we've had a crow that built a nest. So you, you've heard about uh, crow's nest maybe in old ships. There's a crow's nest. Well, that's where the term came from, is from crows building their nests up high. Well, this crow has built a nest, and, and the babies hatched. Now, I didn't get to see them actually coming out of their eggs. What I actually see from being down on the ground is their heads poking up, and their mouths opened wide for mama and daddy crow to come and to feed them. And and this morning, when we were worshiping outside, uh, I saw them flying, mom and dad, flying into the nest and right over our heads and back over, bringing them food. And you could hear them. And, and I just am amazed at, at the wonder. And sometimes it's hard to believe some of the things that we see good and sometimes not so good. But I want to let you know that, that the good things that we see, like babies being hatched, the, the baby birds being hatched, or, or we see someone who's able to walk that hadn't been able to walk before, that's because God is, is present and doing such wonderful things. And then the things that are not so good, 
Believe it or not, God is there too, trying to change those things, trying to change the people that are doing the, the fighting, if that's fighting that we just can't believe that we're seeing. God's there to try to change the people or bring in others that will bring peace. So what I'm trying to, to tell you is that God is all around us. God is always with us, trying to get us to do what is right, what is good for everyone else. So when people look at us, when they watch us, maybe they will have a hard time believing what they're seeing, but maybe, just maybe, they'll begin to believe that God is truly alive. So I hope you have a great week. I hope school is going well for you uh, as you return back to school and you're having a good time and, and you're learning. And uh, I look forward to you checking me out uh, and checking us out and worshiping next week. Have a great, great week. I want to share with you uh, some uh, opportunities and invitation. I uh, wanted to lift up the United Methodist Women Marketplace that there's going to be a change of date. It was originally scheduled for May 23rd. Uh, we're moving that until after we've moved back inside, and we're hoping to be worshiping back inside the beginning of June. We don't have the exact Sunday uh, in June, but the beginning of June, and we'll be back to two services at 9 and 10.30. We'll continue to stream one of those services. We'll let you know which one we'll be streaming uh, as the time gets closer. But so the women have decided to move to uh, June 27th, I believe. That's the date that I put up on here. Yes, June 27th will be the marketplace, uh, the opportunity to uh, purchase some things and items that will help support the mission and the ministries of the United Methodist Women, where they care for women and children locally and in the world. So we hope that you will be able to participate in that. That also means the quilt uh, that they are selling uh, opportunities for, that time will be extended as well to June 27th. So you'll have more time to sell tickets or to purchase your own tickets. So we hope that you will do that as well. So uh, I also want you to save the date and I'm, I'm hoping I got the date right. The first Sunday in May, uh, we'll have our next drive through barbecue and we hope that you participated. At the outdoor service, I was able to ask everybody to raise their hands if they participated in it, and over half the people did. And the few that didn't, I think some were visitors, so they hadn't known about it. So uh, I could take a small poll here. How many of you participated in the drive through dinner? At least once. Okay, we've got, we've got some folks here, and I know everybody in the sound booth have, because they're part of Grace Scott Barbecue, so, so I know that they have. Uh, and I should raise my hand as well. So mark the date, May 2nd. Uh, we'll be getting the ordering information out to you uh, so that you can order and participate. Great food. Uh, we do look forward maybe to a time where we can do a, a drive through and eat here and fellowship together. That would be wonderful to do that as well. This is our, our second month, and I'm going to invite uh, Audrey Greer to come down. She's like, ooh, it's now? Yes, it's now. We are doing our, our servant volunteer of the, of the month, and Audrey was April's, and, and uh, this is the, the first Sunday that we've had the opportunity uh, to share. Audrey is from Michigan. She was born in Detroit, Michigan, and I will say my, my brother and his family... Uh, now have moved back and live in St. Clair. So you probably know where St. Clair is. Uh, so they are there. So I kind of know a little bit about the, a little bit about the, the area. Uh, Audrey has, uh, she attended Central Michigan University. Uh, she has a degree in music education. She has a master's uh, degree in elementary music education. Uh, and I'm sure sometimes even with adults, it's like elementary music <laughs> education. <laughs> I know, no comments with that, I agree. Uh, but uh, so she uh, um, has brought that skill here. She was married to her husband, Jean. Uh, Jean is a, uh, an accomplished composer. We've sung some of his music here uh, on, on Sundays, and it's been a blessing to be able uh, to do that. 
Uh, but uh, after his passing and uh, some time, Audrey moved out west, and she came and she settled in our area, and we've been blessed that she's come, and she has shared her gifts and her talents of music and many other gifts with us in helping us. Uh, she is also the chair of our worship uh, committee team, and uh, we're looking forward to, to moving forward as we come back inside as, as well. Uh, she was brought up uh, Catholic and, and all, but, uh, but attended, until coming to California, Clarkston Community Church. And uh, she served as the assistant choir director. So we are, are blessed. She did check out other churches upon moving here, but she found this to be uh, uh, the place to be. And she says, Pauline greeted me warmly, and once inside, other greeters me as well. So, and like many other churches. So we need to continue to be that welcoming church for, for all people. So, Audrey, I share this certificate as a small appreciation for you as Servant Volunteer of the Month. Very nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Quilts that we are, are blessing this morning. Um, the first one is for Catherine uh, Economo. Uh, Catherine is a uh, fellow clergy in the, the valley here. Uh, she had been dealing with cancer. It was in remission, but it has returned. So she, we want to lift up prayer. She's part of the Interfaith Council. Uh, and that's where I've gotten to know her and others of our church uh, Lana Salyer as well, and, and so we offer this quilt up for Catherine for healing and that she will know, and she does know, of God's love surrounding her. The second quilt is for Diana Robles. She is a friend of Anita Acordinos, uh, and uh, Anita asks for prayers for peace, caring, and love for Diana. So let us pray and ask God's blessings upon these two gifts. Gracious and, and loving God, we, we thank you that before we even knew these persons, you have already been present, you've known them, you've cared for them, you love them. Loving God, we just pray that you bring continued comfort and healing to these women, Catherine and Diana. And we pray that as they receive these gifts that you are blessing, O oh God, these gifts of, of prayer quilts, they will know of our love this church family surrounds them and we hold them in prayer loving god we thank you for this opportunity to share in this ministry in the name of your son jesus christ amen As we light our candles this morning, the first candle as we've been doing since the uh, pandemic is we light for those first responders, medical staff, all that have been involved in battling and caring for those that have been affected by COVID. We pray for the families and friends that have lost members of their family to COVID. And we also give thanks for those that are uh, giving the vaccination shots and being there for those who are uh, coming to receive. And we give thanks for all of them as well. The second candle lift up um, prayers for Jacob and Annie in the loss of their dear baby Nora. We've been praying for them. Nora was born premature. Jacob is the grandnephew of Diane Martinez. We pray for these two uh, persons and, and their loss and for the family and ask that God hold them in his arms. We pray uh, Midge Lloyd is having a hip replacement surgery on Tuesday, so we want to pray. I, we know that she's been in discomfort and pain for so long. We pray for the doctors and medical staff and also that God just continued to surround Midge with, with his healing power.
play for uh, Gloria Galvez's cousin, uh, Mariano uh, Yang, uh, who died of heart failure. We pray for, for uh, Mariano's uh, family and uh, just hold them in, in God's arms. Then the Gutierrez's uh, lift up uh, a joy for their granddaughter, Alyssa, uh, who turned 10 on Tuesday. And this is something as a pastor when you baptize a, a young child and now they're 10. And before you know it, they'll be 20. And then you really feel, feel old and you've been in this ministry a long time. So we do uh, congratulate uh, Alyssa and uh, hope that she has a wonderful, wonderful celebration. Let us pray. Holy God, for this day, for your creation, as we step outside and feel the breeze that is blowing, the warmth of the sun, as we listen for the birds sing to us, we give you thanks, O God. As we witness to the mountains in the distance, as we, O God, come in contact with your children. We thank you for your creation. We thank you for your glory and wonder that fill our days and that demonstrate to us how much that you love us as your children. Holy and and wonderful God, we come into your presence as, as faithful disciples. We pray and ask for your direction and guidance as we struggle and and strive to walk in the footsteps of your son Jesus, to learn the teachings that he gave to his followers and gives to us even to this day, that we can go out and that we can pass on and live out the lessons of peace and justice, love and hope. Oh, loving God, we thank you. We thank you that we have this faith, that we have you that we can lean on It gives us comfort and support in our faith, O God. We are bold to ask for prayers of our loved ones. Those that are struggling with with illness and injury, that are in pain constantly, we pray for your healing comfort, O God. We pray for Midge and we ask, oh God, that you bring this healing power to her as she has this surgery that has been much anticipated. We pray, oh God, for those that have lost loved ones that are grieving. It doesn't matter the the age, a young child to someone who has lived a long life, oh God, it still brings a void in the loved one's lives. Fill that void with your Holy Spirit, a spirit of comfort and strength. We thank you for the blessings and the joys of our days. We thank you for for grandchildren and, and their next birthday. We thank you for the life of, of Alyssa, and we pray that she continues to find joy in each day wonder in all that she sees and for all who are celebrating birthdays young and old alike near and far we thank you loving god we thank you god that that to nasa you continue to protect and watch over the men and women in our armed services and we pray for those that are coming home from afghanistan we pray that the that there will continue to be a building of peace. We know that it will be a struggle. We pray for the people of Afghanistan, O oh God, and we pray that, that they're able to hold on to and to nurture this tenuous peace. We pray for the families of those that lost loved ones these last 20 years. pray for the fathers and the mothers, the brothers and sisters, the sons and daughters, the grandchildren. Loving God, we pray for all of them. We pray one day soon that all of our 
people who are in harm's way can come home. And that that day will signal that there is a peace throughout the world that brings reconciliation and forgiveness and wholeness. We pray that that peace will be realized in our communities, O oh God. We pray for the families that have lost loved ones due to shootings these last couple of weeks. We pray for those who are hurting because of mental illness, that they will get the resources that are needed. Hear our prayers, O oh God, this morning as we pray in faith, as we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christ is risen, let all the earth adore him. Amen. Christ is risen, the saints and angels sing. Alleluia. Eyes of darkness, we have fallen before him. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 36. This is a, another reading of a post-resurrection appearance of Jesus to his disciples, again leading to now their realization and their belief in the resurrected Christ. Hear these words. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do you, why do you have doubts that arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See, it is I, myself. Touch me and see. 
For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have anything, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words and I, that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. May God add understanding to our hearing of the word this morning. Amen. I can't unsee it. Have you ever uttered those words or, or you've heard somebody utter those words? Because you've seen something that maybe is really embarrassing or gross or, or maybe you've had something to come across your computers, a friend or a stranger has sent you something, a, a video clip, something on, on Facebook or YouTube or, or Snapchat or, or TikTok or one of the other platforms, and, and you see it, and then you say, I can't unsee that. And, and it lingers in your mind. It's, it's emblazoned there for, for hours or days or months. And you do everything you can to watch something else, to do something else, to distract you from, from what you've seen. Or maybe you say, I want to unsee it. Maybe you've been in the wrong place at the wrong time. You've seen an accident, you've witnessed to it, or you've seen a, a crime, and now you're going to have to, to testify, and, and you're going to have to inconvenience yourself and, and make arrangements to go to court and and to be a, a witness. Or maybe you're not sure who you're testifying against, how, how dangerous they, they might be and what might happen. I want to share with you, when I was a, a grocery uh, clerk, one of the, the stores that I, I worked at, I was the, the assistant night manager, and, and uh, I was at the check register. And all of a sudden, I, I heard my, my uh, bagger, a young lady, yell, Oh, my God! And I, and I got a glimpse of somebody coming up from behind me to my right, and I thought that they were going to go for my till, for my register to steal the money. And I gave them a forearm shiv, and, and we had cigarette cases right there, and I, I shoved them up a, against it. And then as, as he was walking around, and I turned around, and I really looked at, at what, I, what was happening and saw that, that he was buck naked. He was a, a teenager, maybe 14, 15 perhaps 16 years old, and as we tried to, to corral him and we called uh, the police, uh, the butcher came out and, and trying to calm him down, and, and he cold cocked him. He broke his nose. And it took four officers to get him in the car and come to find out he was high on PCP, and, and his dad had kicked him out of, out of the house, and so he comes up the street. The store was just down the street from his house. Well, of course, we're called upon myself, my, my assistant, and the butcher to, to testify. We go, and we're in the witness lounge, and then we work ourselves up. You know, this young man was big. He was strong. Of course, he was PCP strong, but he was strong. And, and we're starting to think, oh, my gosh, what, what if he, you know, comes home, and he knows who we are, and he wanders up to the, to the store again. Oh, my God, we work ourselves up. And my, my assistant, he's a big fellow. Well, as it turned out, they pleaded the case, and we didn't have to, to testify. But boy, we were really worked up about that. You are witnesses to these things, Jesus said to the disciples before his ascension. What, does it, what did it mean for the, the disciples? And what does it mean for us? Today, we're going to, to consider what it means that as followers of Christ, we are witnesses to the resurrection. If you've heard of a close friend or family member had, 
come back from the dead, you would understandably question the sanity and the, the reliability of the people that are telling you. You would have to see the person with your own eyes, and even then, a lot of questions would continue to, uh, to arise to, to, for you to confirm that this person truly is alive. Last August, uh, a, w- a young woman in the suburbs of Detroit was, was pronounced dead as paramedics came to her home and tried to resuscitate her for 30 minutes and, and not being able to do so, calling an emergency room doctor. And with his affirmation, they pronounced her, her dead, took her to the mortuary, and just as they were getting ready to embalm her, she opened her eyes. Can you imagine the stories that those witnesses told? about this experience, things like this just don't happen. Luke tells us that there are three events for the disciples to believe that Jesus was alive. The first, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women had gone back to the the tomb to give proper preparations to the body of Jesus, bringing their, their spices trying to wonder how they would roll the the stone away. And they see that it's rolled away, and then they see two men dressed in dazzling white clothes standing there next to where the body would have been. And they ask the women, why are you seeking the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. When the woman saw this, experienced this, she ran back. they ran back to the disciples. They told the eleven what they had seen, what they had heard, but the, but the men did not believe them. Oh, they're just women. The second event Luke records took place on the road to Emmaus. The two men are walking to Emmaus, and then all of a sudden Jesus appears, and he's walking with them. They don't recognize him, and they're telling Jesus, what had happened over the the weekend and and about his death. And then Jesus goes and stops with with them and and they have a meal. And as Jesus breaks the bread, their eyes are opened and they see that it is Jesus. And they remember what he was telling them on the road about these things and about this must happen to the Messiah. And after they recognized him, he was gone. And they returned to Jerusalem that night. They didn't wait for daybreak. They didn't wait for light to guide them. They went back to tell the 11 disciples, and and they didn't even believe them. But then the third event occurred. While the 11 were talking with with the two men from Emmaus, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said that they thought that they were seeing a ghost. And Jesus said, look at my hands, look at my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me. Feel the nail holes in me. And he says, and a ghost does not have flesh or bones like like I have. And, And it says, even in their joy, they still didn't believe. So Jesus then goes to the next level of proof. Do you have something here? to eat, and they gave him a fish. Well, what ghost would need to eat anything? And Jesus eats right in front of them. Now, did Jesus have a smile on his face when the recognition finally began to to set in? Did he chuckle? We don't know that, of course, but surely there was this friendly face of, of the one that they thought they would never see again in their lives. And he began to teach them that these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he began, well, then he began to tell them about his ministry and his mission. This was the, the greatest Bible study of all time. Can you imagine Think about a a, a renowned author and going to a book signing and and the crowd that came to listen to him. And now think about the author of the universe was explaining to them about his ministry and mission to the world. And Jesus went on to talk about his role as the Messiah and the things that, that had to happen as he fulfilled that role that the Messiah is to suffer and to 
rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. To me, that is key to this scripture passage, to all the nations, not just to one nation, not just to one people, not just to one culture or ethnicity, but to all the people. Then came the clincher, the hook. You are witnesses of these things. Not you can be witnesses. Not that you should be witnesses. Not that you can choose to be witnesses. You are witnesses. They could not unsee what they had seen. And because of that, they had responsibilities for the rest of their lives to continue being witnesses. And then Jesus continued on, See, I'm sending you what my Father promised, to stay here in the city until you have been clothed by the power from on high. And just in a short time, 50 days actually after the resurrection, would be the Pentecost, would be the time where the, the power of the Holy Spirit breathes into them and they began the work of being witnesses. Caroline Lewis, a professor of preaching at Luther Seminary, says of this passage, as it turns out, witnessing is not voluntary, but a state of mind. It is not voluntary, but a state of mind. We are witnesses. It's who we are. It's what we are. It's what we have been made for. It's what we've been called to do. Now, for some, this is not good news. We remember when we have not worn that job or that title or that calling very well. We remember when we have deferred the task of being witnesses to someone else. Oh, we go to church, but we go for the fellowship. We go for the feel-good message. We know sometimes, probably more than we care to admit, we have not been good witnesses for Christ. What we have to realize, however, is that we are never not a witness. So when we turn our backs on the opportunities that God gives us to be witnesses, we nonetheless continue to witness, just as the best and most effective witness, perhaps even a witness against God can and wants to do in the lives of God's people. Either way, however, we are witnesses. We are witnesses in all that we, we do every day. When people know that we are believers, they're watching us, they're checking us out. It's no wonder that there are some people who say, well, why should I go to church? I've seen those people, I've seen how they live. They're not living up to the, the billing of, of loving one another. We are witnesses in everything that we do. Mark, a businessman at the beginning of his career with a growing family, a meager salary, asked a, a friend in, in church a, about airport parking for an upcoming trip. Every dollar he spent on, on travel came out of his own pocket, and he was always looking for a way to save. The friend recommended to one of the parking companies and, and told him it was possible to, to get a, a free stay for so many trips. He said that he could get him a, a voucher to use, but it wasn't quite above board. The young man said that he would manage on, on his own and didn't feel right about, about doing anything that was questionable, even though many people probably took advantage of this. Nobody would really know, but he would know. Mark would know. The friend smiled and said that he was glad to hear that his faith was not for sale. Well, if he knew that he was tempting him, why did he do it? But Mark resisted. We are witnesses, and others are watching to see if God really makes a difference in our lives and in our faith. We are witnesses in our workplaces, our jobs. We are witnesses in school and in our marriage. We are witnesses in our families. We are witnesses as parents, as children, in our hobbies and in our sports. We are witnesses in all of life. We are witnesses. Our children are watching us. And if we don't, they don't see us witnessing to the love of Christ to, to care for other people, why would they want to do that? If they see in us not as people 
that want to belong to the body of Christ, why would they want to? They are being watched as well at school, and if they don't have that to witness to, when others at school ask, are you believers, why would they say, yes, I am? We are witnesses in all that we do, and we can make a lot of excuses as to why we should set aside our witnessing from time to time, but those excuses, friends, they don't hold water. We are witnesses, and every day we should look for the best way to witness to our faith and bear witness for Christ and the resurrection in everything, everything we do, in all the words that we use, all the actions that we take, People are watching us. There are probably people saying, well, why aren't you worshiping inside? Why aren't you full to capacity? We are witnessing to the understanding of do no harm. We are witnessing because we care for others and we want to make sure that whatever we do is out of the love for others as we have been taught through the example of Jesus. Shortly after the day of Pentecost, Peter healed a crippled man, and then this prompted people to, to gather around him and John at Solomon's portico. That, that is a portico on the outer wall of, of the temple. And so the people came to listen to, to John preach, or to Peter preach, and Peter rose up on the occasion preaching a good word for the resurrected Christ. And referring to the resurrection, Peter said, to this we are witnesses. That's true for all of us, friends. To this we are witnesses. And what are we going to do about it? It's not just about our words. It's not just about saying I'm a Christian. It's about going out and doing. It's about speaking up. It's about being those witnesses. So let our witness be visible and known to all who see us. Amen. I share with you this morning as we prepare our hearts for, for offering that the golden basket will go to help support the prayers and, and squares ministry. As we see, this ministry touches lives through, throughout the world, literally throughout the world. We have sent quilts to, to people nearby in our own community. We have sent quilts to, to people, loved ones, in far-off places. It is a vital ministry of love and care. It is a witness. So if you are so moved, if you click on uh, our online giving, there will be a place for Golden Basket. You can click on there. Anything that's brought in this week up until Saturday will go towards uh, supporting the golden basket of prayers and squares. We also invite you to give to the ministries of this church and to the mission as we continue to witness in the community. Let us reflect on how God has touched us this morning as we hear Corey's gift.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, for all the gifts that you have blessed us with, we return just a portion of those gifts out of our love for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that these gifts will be used to witness to the awesomeness of your love and your joy and your peace. Loving God, for these gifts we give you thanks. Amen. Let us uh, stand, if you are able, in your home. Let us sing our closing hymn, He Lives. Go now and may the God of love and peace and hope and the Son, Jesus Christ, who lives in our hearts and walks in front, behind, and alongside us, and the Holy Spirit that calls us and moves us to witness of that love be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.